So, um, hello you people, how are you all doing? So in today's video I thought I'll show you guys how you can improve your hard drive's performance by a really massive amount. And this may be helpful for those who need to get to squeeze just a little bit more performance out of their system. It's a little bit more complicated, but there are a lot of easier things you can do to improve the performance. So, first off, let me preface it by saying that um, if you don't really need it necessarily, I would recommend using it. But if you really need that performance and you're willing to take the risk of losing some of your data in case of a power outage, then it's up to you. There is a small chance you will lose your data, a really small one, but it is increased because of all the settings we're going to do and all the things. So it's just a bit of a warning. Now, let me first show you uh, the stats before. So this is for my home drive, for example, for my home partition on my hard drive before applying all the settings. And this is for my system partition before applying all the settings. As you can see, the head here has to move a lot of times, the drive's head which isn't what we want. We want to minimize the amount of movements our head has to make, therefore effectively making it feel more snappy. So this is my system partition. Again, system, uh, where is it? So uh, this is my system partition before, and this is my system partition after. Now it may seem by this graph that the latency has been lowered. However, don't get fooled. You can see it's a lot smoother than it was before which is what we are after. Also, access times have been reduced from, well, not by much, but they have been in fact increased. However, the thing you do not see is actually the smoothness of the curve. It's a lot smoother and a lot, that, a lot less, you know, jumpy, therefore making the hard drive head move a lot less than it would otherwise have to move. And this is for my home partition. You can see it's a much smoother curve. So it, you know, can move at a much more uh, streamlined speed and it doesn't have to move into a different place that often. So after showing you the benefits of it and explaining a few things, how do you actually go about doing this? Well, first off, we need to actually disable the drive checking. I wouldn't recommend it unless you need that performance. So to disable drive checking, you'll have to change the, I actually explained this in one of my other videos, but you will have to change these zeros at the end to uh, this, these ones or zeros at the end to all zeros so that you can disable drive checking. Next, you're going to have to add uh, these two parameters, barrier zero and commit 60, uh, right behind your root partition and your home partition. So this is your root partition, this is your home partition. If you have it separate like me, if you don't, you just have a root partition, apply it right behind your root partition, uh, behind either no, no A time or defaults. Uh, if you don't, if you have just defaults, I would recommend adding these three all together. I'm going to explain real soon why. So if we switch over to Firefox here real quick, uh, basically disabling, we're going to disable the access time update, which may improve your performance by a bit. So to do that, you have to use the no a time parameter. This will pretty much, um, you know, let's say it won't update like the timestamps of your file systems uh, files, which may or may not be important, but it's not that important to be honest with you. Um, for example, ext4 is a journaling file system, so it will keep a recording of when the file was checked. By doing the no a time, we pretty much disable this feature that for giving us a bit more performance. Next, we are increasing the commit interval. Normally it's set to five seconds. However, we can set it so that it, you know, uh, it will like, uh, you won't lose as much as like five seconds of your latest work. By changing it to 60, we pretty much uh, are saying that in case of a power loss, we won't 
we will pretty much lose or you know we will lose pretty much up to 60 seconds of our work so that means that there's a higher risk of losing a lot of important data because that's a whole minute and just to paint you an example you have some data that you're working with and it's pretty much saved like a copy of it each and every five seconds on a regular Linux system. By doing this change, it will save every minute. So imagine the following situation. You have a power outage right at about 58 seconds before it makes this, the change, before it registers it. So all the work that you did for those 58 seconds, gone. You won't be able to get it back. So I recommend that you use this with caution. Next, we're going to turn off barriers. Now, disabling this without a battery-backed cache is not recommended, obviously. It may uh, lead to severe file system corruption and data loss. So if you lose any data by doing this in the future, don't at me. It's on your own responsibility. So remember that. Um, this is pretty much, you know, on your own, you're pretty much on your own and it really depends on your own, like, thought process. If you really need that performance, it's up to you. One small thing, this performance benefit may not be as noticeable on SSDs. This is mostly targeted towards hard drives where you have spinning media. So if you are using a hard drive like I am and you still believe in hard drives, this might be the way to go in terms of improving performance. But this is just one part of the story. There's actually one more thing we can do. So after doing all of this, there is actually one more thing. So the other thing is in fact using GNOME Disks. Now GNOME Disks is a utility that is pretty much present in most Linux distributions. You can install, it comes pretty much by default with Ubuntu or m many major distributions. But in case you don't have it, you can just type in how to uh, install. And let's do uh, GNOME disks. And it will come up with a bunch of results how you can install it on your own distribution. You'll just have to look for it and you'll be able to find it, how to install it really easily based on your distribution. So after you had it in, after you've got it installed, we can pretty much hide everything of this. We don't need this. Um, so this is the main star of the show. Here are a few things we can do. So in most cases, you have two main partitions here. You have your, for example, in my config, I have a home part, a like system partition, and then a home partition. Here is where the performance benefits come in. You select one of the partitions and you could benchmark it to see if you can get a performance benefit. But to actually apply it, you go up here to the three dots and you go to drive settings. Once you go to drive settings, here comes the fun part. Disable standby timeout. Once you disable it, your drives will be constantly spinning at a constant speed and they will not turn off ever. You can set it to never time out, but it's easier to just have it turned off in the first place. You don't have to do anything else. Next is app, which is the advanced power management setting. Set it to 255, which will never spin down. It may wear out your drive, but it's up to you. I've set it to be fully disabled. I haven't noticed any difference at all, but there is a difference when it comes to um, like the access times and how fast things load. Next is the write cache. If you really want to increase your uh, write and read speeds on your hard drive, enable write caching. But as you can see, it may leave the system susceptible to data loss in the event of a power failure. Basically, anything you're working on currently may be lost forever if you don't have a copy saved. So bear that in mind. If you're after performance and not data, like backups and such, you can leave this enabled. If you are cautious in terms of your data, 
turn this off but if you're after performance leave this on and it will work just fine after having all of that applied you'll click ok you'll apply everything and then you'll have to reboot after doing all of this you should pretty much see a performance improvement right of right away so for example as i already showed you this is for my home partition so that's that so this is for my home partition it's a lot more consistent uh, compared to before as you can see there is a change access times are slightly higher but as you can see it's a lot smoother which is what makes a much bigger difference because the drive head doesn't have to move as much so it's actually getting a bit less worn out but you know it's not much of a difference and here is our sy main system partition after so before you can see a lot more drive activity where it like it moves a lot more to different places which you can determine by looking over here after applying all these settings you can see it's a lot smoother it's not the most ideal but it is smoother in the end and also as you can see drive speeds have in some cases went up by a fairly decent amount so you can see we have 107 megabit megabytes per second compared to before 104 megabytes per second so a slight boost in performance here we can see it jumped from 137 megabytes per second to 140 megabytes per second so you can pretty much boost your drive speed with this method after applying all of this again you may or may not notice a difference but in my case it really helped out in terms of improving the overall performance of my drive and everything runs smoothly without any issues or problems whatsoever so again your mileage may vary if you ended up liking this video and all the content in it, make sure to subscribe, share this video around, and I will see you guys in hopefully the next video, which I'm not sure what I'll make, but I think I'll make the how you should partition your Linux OS drive, because it's fairly important to know how to do that properly, in, so that you don't lose any data. So yeah, see ya.